something? <laughs> Malayan Rainforest Station is a research-based organization. Uh, they engage more with communities uh, to empower them in terms of economic and also educational sections. So helping Batik to realize about CFS and also wildlife around them is very crucial because they are the first entity that gonna be the eyes and ears to the conservation work. The most meaningful part of this experience for me will be being able to teach the kids regarding the world outside of them. So being able to teach them more, teach them more about like what's going out around the world and how they can actually help by recycling plastics and all sorts, it actually like made an impact on me. I was always on the lookout for uh, volunteering programs that I can actually engage myself into. So right now I'm volunteering with a project in Refused Eco Tier. It's called Perantian Turtle Project, where they will do conservation works regarding turtle. So it's my first time seeing it with my own eyes and I felt it's something really, really magical. It's a good opportunity for me to get into the scene and to get to know a lot of people in the scene. We learn about wildlife monitoring through camera traps. And then second, we did quite a lot of stuff with other NGOs. For example, we did like a survey uh, with Orang Oste Community with WWF Malaysia. We engage with the communities. We hold like monthly workshops. It's more towards the kids. Uh, we also have food composting, how they can save the environment by composting at home because this is like the first time I'm actually doing something like this, right? So when I came in, it was, I just thought that, okay, it was just going to be me planting trees and then like, okay, seeing the environment, which was something more meaningful than me staying at home. So like, when I came here, I realized there's just much more to just planting trees. I was like, maybe it might sound a bit cheesy, but maybe I was like a different person before the Rasma journey and after the Rasma journey. Before, my mindset was, he's not doing it, so why should I? But then now, after like going through all of this, so now my mindset, sort of shifted to, if I don't do it, then who will? And as a Rasma volunteer, what we do there is uh, basically to maintain the cleanliness of the area. At the same time, we also provide environmental awareness to the hikers, to the cyclists of the area. Because one thing I realised that when you want to champion for things like uh, environmental protection, you have to lead by example. And to lead by example, a lot of time you have to do all these things very consistently, very continuously. And hopefully, when, while you are doing that, you'll be able to inspire the people that is around the area. Rimao is also under the Vista, so I also do work under Rimao. So currently, I'm working on doing a mural for them. What I've also done for the Vista is taking screenshots of different times of the same areas. And then they will see like how much forest cover is lost and that one is used for one of their videos where they are trying to persuade the state ministers to help protect the central forest vine. We are working as a team to come up with a really good script to make sure that everyone that watched the video can learn about the central forest vine. If I can tell stories like this, then I can inspire more people, I can educate more people. So what I did for Miramau is that I actually helped out on their work like a day at Great Terra and it was a very great experience because I met lots of NGOs right there that actually helped me learn more about why all these other wildlife are important in our ecosystem as well. So it's great that we notice why not only we should we be proud of our national animals but also why should we protect all these national animals. CRCRC, it's greatly located in Banun, which is the, at the CSF itself. All of the seed collection has been done along the CFS. So once they take the seed collection and then they grow it before they transplant it, so it has a big opportunity for them to replanting it into the plot of the forest itself. I have learned a lot compared to my expectation because I've exposed the replanting in the forestry itself. So, uh, I was a big shock because I've never done it in the forest. So other than the research, they also do forums and conferences on the you know, most current topic. So like I got the honour of becoming an MC there. For me personally, like this whole journey and ideas like, is all about learning and just like, I was like, I'm like a sponge right now. 
just like gathering and like absorbing all new information. Basically, what I did for Greensleeve was that the first event I joined was the one they had in Penang Hill Festival, where they worked with a school of students from SMK Tunku Hapspa. They went to the school and trained them on biodiversity and composting. And after that project ended, they were to go to Penang Hill and create awareness about their project and talk about their importance to it. Yeah, I was like surprised about how much I know more, like know about some bears now because like, I get to see them so often and I'm also like now able to identify which some bears like which based on sometimes um, their personality or like their characteristics. Like there's a some bear called one one with like a pink nose, so I know that's the like that which some bear is which. I've been producing content for the habitat website about the Police State Park event, also for the Police State Park Visitor Centre. I followed the team to the Police State Park and we basically tracked uh, part of the 10km trail to Gunung Police. Through this tour, I get to learn more about wildlife and nature in Malaysia. I really like doing things for the environment, so I thought it was a really good opportunity to mix both, like something that will help me learn more things and help me like help the environment a bit more. The most meaningful activity for me is actually meeting all of these people and like seeing how how the schools work and how they are how the kids are very interested in all of these things. So I volunteered with the Malaysian Primatological Society in Langkawi, so under their night spotting project. So we would go out at night and spot for a few hours and um, observe their behaviours. But in the day, uh, we work with the EcoBricks project. We collected a lot of plastic and clean it up, cut it up and make them into EcoBricks, in which we taught the kids at a nearby school how to do it. It was so much fun. If you want to think about volunteering with an organisation, um, I would say just use the skills that you already have. That like you don't necessarily have to go to a forest if you don't like to be in the forest. Like you can do like what I did, do some social media stuff. <laughs> so yeah, for awareness, yeah, awareness. We need lots of awareness right now. The most interesting topic that I researched was World Ozone Day. That research led me to find out that the world came together and created this thing called the Montreal Protocol. So if we could do it in the past, what is stopping us from replicating that success and doing it now?